Hey there, fish keepers. Dean here. Put this video together on breeding and raising the fry of blue eyes to inspire you to do this yourself. It's a fantastic species to keep, and uh, I've very much enjoyed them. I first seen the Luminatus blue eye about two years ago at Big L's Aquarium in Edmonton, Alberta, and uh, I had to have them. They're absolutely gorgeous. They were displaying in the pet store just like this, and uh, as soon as you see that, you know, you're sold. Um, I found them to be quite easy to breed and uh, managed to acquire a number of different species. So. I breed them in a number of different ways uh, as a continuous setup, a non-continuous setup, so a semi-continuous, and uh, it's using spawning mops and just playing musical tanks by putting the adults in to spawn and then uh, taking them out and letting the fry hatch and uh, raising them in the tank. These guys here are Gertrude eyes. I uh, acquired these at uh, Pisces in Calgary and they were an absolutely fantastic find. I'd never uh, seen them before I purchased them, and man, they're gorgeous. So they display a lot. Uh, one of the species that I'd encountered before um, in the hobby, probably 10, 15 years ago at least, um, were Fricatus rainbows, and uh, they look nothing like mine in the pet stores. They uh, look pretty washed out most of the time, but uh, you feed them up well and uh, put them into a comfortable environment and they really color up and uh, display a lot. And you can see these ones here are breeding. This was actually in the quarantine tank that I had them in. And uh, then fry started popping up in there. So that was the first species that I was able to continuously breed. Uh, the fry just would live on their own up there. They're, they're pretty quick little guys. So they were able to... Um, get away from the adults uh, fairly easily. Uh, so you can see there's almost no cover there, and there's the adults there. Um, but uh, you don't get a lot of fry because they get predated on a little bit. As you can see there, almost had that one. The Illuminatus, I tried to set up as a continuous breeding setup, but uh, I had to basically do it as continuous with assistance. So taking the fry out and raising them separately because these guys ate all their fry and eggs. Uh, so there was a good spot that I had for the fry to hide out uh, above some Asteriana. It was a Cryptocorn Asteriana. And I was able to net those guys out of there and then uh, remove them from the net with a lid to a fish food container because you don't want to expose them to air. They're pretty fragile. And uh, I would just take that lid with the little fry in it and acclimate it to whatever temperature the tank was that I was putting it in and uh, grow them up separately in a little five gallon tank or I had uh, also some shoebox type tanks that uh, I grew them up in. There was a bit of infusori in there so they got a bit of that as well. Um, and then you can see here though that uh, by far and away the preferred method was using spawning mops. Uh, blue eyes love their spawning mops. If you put a spawning mop into a tank the blue eyes are all over it. You can see the Gertrude eye here absolutely love it and uh, is able to get a fair number of eggs from them. So when you're using spawning mops, squeeze them out, look to see that you have a lot of eggs in it and you can just plunk it into a different container and uh, take the fry out as they hatch or you can put them into an established aquarium and let the eggs hatch. Uh, it takes 10 to 14 days uh, but if you put it in for a while know that it'll be about you know 21 days because they'll hatch slowly over time. Um, but by far and away the the best method that i found for using spawning mops was just to take out the mop squeeze out the water and uh, remove the eggs by hand that way you knew how many you had and uh, you had a lot more control and i just put them into a three by three by five container uh, with it one drop of methylene blue and uh, you can see in there that uh, there's fry or eggs of uh, different ages and maturities so they uh, the darker ones there are actually Ivansoni eggs, and the other ones are Gertrudei. Uh, but they hatch over time, so you just look at it every day and uh, just see if any fry have hatched, and then move them into your rearing container. So you can see here there's a little Gertrudei that hatched. And uh, I just use a modified ice cream scoop and put them into the rearing container, which was the same temperature. These ones are just at room temperature here. 
Um, so really easy to raise. Uh, my water is hard um, and I'll put the parameters below so that you can check it out. But once they get big enough in that uh, rearing tank, I put them into larger, higher tanks so that they have uh, more room to grow. And uh, these deeper tanks, they uh, allow the granules and different uh, dried foods that I feed to slowly sink down. And uh, also microworms too. It just keeps them in the water column a lot longer so that the blue eyes have more time to eat because they don't really feed off the bottom. Alternatively, you can just set up a spawning tank and uh, play musical fish with your adults. Put the adults in there, let them lay some eggs, then allow those eggs to hatch. And uh, you can grow them up that way as well too, really successfully. But I found by far and away that the spawning mops were the way to go. And I uh, was able to actually increase my Luminatus um, numbers astronomically by using spawning mops. Uh, these were the fry of the original 10 that I had. And once I put the spawning mops in there, I'd be able to pull out, you know, 70, 80 eggs at a time and uh, raise them separately. So the spawning mops were definitely the, the way to go for big numbers and more control. But uh, for other species like uh, Ivan Sonai, I also had to use the spawning mops and collect eggs every day. So I, I ended up acquiring just one one female and two males of the species. And uh, I used the spawning mops exclusively for them because I they were looked like they were older fish. Um, they've since mostly passed on. There was only three of them. But uh, I did acquire about uh, between 20 and 30 fry that I'll need to get some more of that strain to uh, increase their genetic diversity. But these guys are doing really good right now and I've got them in pretty good numbers to, to reproduce them. Um, but you can see they have quite a bit bigger eyes than the other ones. Uh, so they're the blue eye with the biggest blue eye. As far as feeding goes, I always start out with Ceramicron. Use the paintbrush method. Uh, kudos to Dean from Aquarium Co-op. Um, works really good. Feed it twice a day. And then I move over to this Northfin uh, fry starter food, which is 250 microns. The Sarah is 50. So moving up to 250 after about three weeks uh, works pretty good. And then I go to my standard for feeding my adult blue eyes, which is tetratropical granules, but uh, crushed up in a coffee grinder to a fine powder. Uh, they have pretty small mouths. It distributes them evenly and uh, they love them. So tetratropical granules. Uh, to start off when I'm feeding the uh, Sarah Micron, I also feed Paramecium, which I acquired from Fish Easy YouTube channel and uh, super easy to culture. He's got a great video on how to um, do it all. It's uh, pretty simple, way easier than the Infusoria I was growing. Um, and you can see here that they're actually fairly large compared to Infusoria that I would have grown on my own for my fish tanks. And uh, it's a fairly pure culture. So you feed those after um, the Ceramicron, they can eat on them all day. And then these are the microworms that I feed uh, in the taller tanks. They take a while to, to sink and give the fish lots of time to feed on them. But my primary is brine shrimp, of course. So they really put on weight from that. And one of the other real critical things is that when you're breeding these guys, they just produce a lot more eggs when you feed the adults um, live foods. So I've acquired eggs from spawning mops with adults that have just been fed on dry foods and they're just very few. Um, but you feed them lots of live food and uh, they produce way more eggs and it seems like the eggs are a lot more viable because I get way higher hatch rates out of them when I've been feeding them a lot of live foods. So it's pretty critical if you want to breed blue eyes to give them live foods to start out with. Um, the thing that I've loved the most about uh, raising all these blue eyes is that I have a lot of blue eyes. So this is my 75 gallon grow out tank. You can see Fricatus and Luminatus in there. And uh, they're just a, a showstopper. When people come over, um, they love the Fricatus and Luminatus um, 
in the 75 gallon in those big schools just lots of action going on and they're both really beautiful fish so it's been great to have a lot of them and uh, you can see that uh, you see on the internet quite often that luminatus are poor competitors well i can tell you when you raise them with furcatus they become pretty good competitors <laughs> and uh, they seem to do just fine uh, the other blue eye that I've acquired recently, about six weeks ago, when they were pretty small, is the honey blue eye, um, Pseudomagill mellis, and uh, they were pretty hard to acquire, and uh, they're supposed to be more difficult to breed, so I've got them outside in a deck pond right now, where there's some spawning mops in there and lots of cover for any fry that potentially come out, um, and hopefully these guys will spawn. They're... Uh, a bit bigger than what you see in this video now, but uh, just at the point where they're starting to show some breeding behavior. So hopefully my next video will be on spawning the honey blue eye and raising their fry. Hope you enjoyed my video. Happy fish keeping!